What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today we're coming in with a hoot and a holler, a true banger. In today's video, I'm going to tell you guys the story of the last time I snorted some X pills and also we're going to have a major hoot, an all around holler. It's just, it's going to be a good vibe in today's video. So I hope you guys enjoy, drop a like if you do, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and also check out the $65 zips on only gas, baby. Hey, without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Also, actually, follow me on Twitter, pretty please, at the Goblin with three N's. I'll link it in the description and the comments. Please, please follow me. I'm gonna follow some people back. I wanna hit 100K, baby. I tweet bangers all day, every day. You know the drill. Follow me. Let's dive into it. Now, this one took place back in 2021, and specifically the beginning of the summer of 2021. Now, listen. This was a period of my life that I've touched on on this channel, but this year we're really going to start diving into it. In fact, we might even have a new series coming later this year, but we'll get to that when the time comes. So this was an era of my life that I haven't really gone into much detail about, but we're going to start doing so here. This is, a, I, I guess, one of the more detailed uh, videos about this point in my life. But 2021 was a really rough year for me. I was just not in a great mental state. I had gone through a breakup like just before halfway through the year. I was raging through pretty much every drug I could get my hands on. I was doing blow. I was popping Zans. I was doing ketamine again. Pretty much anything I could get my hands on, I was going. I was absolutely down as a clown. And this was also a very different period of my drug use because typically I was a pretty social drug addict. I liked going out or inviting people over or sharing my stash. I rarely would sit at home and do it on my own with some a few exceptions here and there. But 2021 was a different game. I isolated Almost the entire year, I would say. I mean, I went out here and there maybe a handful of times a month, but really the majority of the time, the only interaction I got was when people came to my house because I would just sit in the crib raging. It was a party that never ended in my office. I'll tell you what. I would sit at my desk, geeked off three drugs, catching lobsters on RuneScape. We're going ape in this crib. So when a couple of my homies had hit me up and offered to come down to visit me, I jumped on that immediately because I kind of needed it at the time, honestly. I was pretty depressed. I was lonely. So I was like, yo, please spin my block. Let's have an absolute rager. We could do whatever we want in this bitch. I don't care. Throw a Molotov at the neighbor's house. Don't care. Sell Fent to the police. Don't care. We could do whatever we want on this block. This is my hood. Please come through. I need company. So pretty quickly after we had planned this out, they came on down. And I don't remember exactly how soon after it was, but I don't know. We'll just go with a week. We'll, we'll say a week after we discussed it, they came down. So the homies came through, you know, Nate and Owen, they made the three-hour drive down to visit me. They come through and they were planning to stay just for a couple nights. It was really just going to be like a, you know, spend the night, maybe the next night. We'll see what the vibes are. But nevertheless, we got drugs in this bitch. You see... I asked them to bring all the goods. I told them, listen, I got a lot of goodies here. I got the blow. Whatever you guys want to add into the mix, feel free. And they were very excited. They said, bet. Nate and Owen were some homies who had only come down to visit me maybe once or twice since I had moved down to this crib. And I hadn't really seen them in a while. So I was pretty excited for this one. So they came on down. They came through. They got to my crib. I invited them in. And pretty much from the rip, we're down for shenanigans. They're like, yo, listen, we're hungry after that drive. Let's go get some eats. But we got to fuck around. Like, we got to get lit first. So immediately, first solution is roll a blunt. You know, obviously, you roll a blunt. So that's what we're doing. These were still in my blunt rolling days. I actually haven't rolled a blunt in I don't even know how long, dude. I haven't rolled a blunt in probably years at this point. It's just bong rips and joints now. But listen, this was my blunt era. And let me tell you one thing about me. If I'm in a blunt smoking era, I'm up to no good. 
That's my Black Air Force era. That's my my absolute D-Gen era, all right? If you ever see me with a Swisher Sweet Diamond in my hand, stay back. Being within six feet of me during this era of my life would have put you in more danger than a Palestinian dude whose car broke down in Jerusalem. That's a big threat, ladies and gentlemen. I was up to no good at this era of my life, so when my homies came through and we rolled up the blunt, I knew that the activities were just getting started. Now we smoke a couple blunts, and this is like a ritual. This is how I started pretty much every sesh with my homies. No matter if we ended up doing cocaine, crack, whatever other drug under the sun we felt like, it always started with some smoke. Always. We're never going straight balls to the wall. Well, actually, no. Cocaine was like the one exception to that. But otherwise, otherwise, typically, we weren't going straight balls to the wall. So we're smoking this blunt, and in my living room, I had my little rosin press set up. I had this little Nug Smasher Mini that I used to have, and God, I miss it. I just talked about it in a video I posted the other day, and now here I am talking about this thing again, and I'm sad, bro. I'm sad. I haven't talked about this thing in years, and now all of a sudden, it's like I told two stories back-to-back that reminded me of it, and now I'm upset. May the rosin press rest in peace. But either way, so as we're smoking the blunt, I realized that I hadn't shown the homies my new rosin press yet, so I bust that shit out I'm like boys you gotta peep this shit and I'm explaining I'm like yeah bro like you just you just pull the lever down and you set the little temperature on there and you just you just get rosin out of it and they were flabbergasted they were amazed they're like bro we gotta try this shit, you know? And I had some extra weed, so I happily obliged, right? I ran upstairs, I grabbed a big old bag of weed out of my room, and I also grabbed a bag of blow, because I knew that was gonna come in handy, and I ran back downstairs. Now, I grabbed my little bags, and I don't remember what micron of bag I used. The kit I bought came with a whole bunch of them, but I ended up, I don't know, whatever micron bag I ended up using, and the micron is the size of the holes in the bag. Whenever you're pressing some stuff in a rosin press, you know, flour in particular, you gotta put it inside this little bag, you know, and then the micron, uh, that gauge is like the, the, I don't know, bro, listen, I'm not an expert, all right, either way, I picked a bag with some tiny holes that I couldn't fit my cock in, I put some weed in there instead and squished it, that's the moral of the story, so, we squished this weed, I'm showing them, and lo and behold, some rosin comes out, now, the yields were always horrible, I had no idea what I was doing, I did a little bit of research on Google, but honestly, as long as I got a dab out of it, I was happy, I would purposefully buy, like, cheaper average weed, just cause it was really fun to squish that shit, so, I took pride in it, so I squished that shit, the homies were watching, Nate and Owen were like, damn, like, that's sick, we gotta try that shit, so I busted out the rig, I'm like, say less, baby, uh, listen, I had a rig set up damn near everywhere. At this point in my life, I had I was big into e-nails, right? So I had an e-nail up by my computer, right? And then I had another e-nail that I would set up just downstairs. I, I had it going at this point, right? So I bust out the downstairs e-nail. I'm like, bet, boys. Like, hey, say less. No, hey, no problem. Let's get a little dab going. So I just scooped the entire paper, and I was like, fuck it, we're just gonna drop a fat dab and pass it around. All the homies are gonna tap it, you know, all the homies, hey, we're running a train on this rig. Now we take the dab, and it's pretty fire, and after we take the dab, I bust out my bag, you blow. I'm like, boys, it's time to have some fun, like, the pregame is really getting started. Mind you, we hadn't even gotten food yet, like, the original objective was let's just get a little stoned and then go get food. Things escalated pretty quick, right? So I bust out my bag of blow. And Nate busts out a bag with flats in it. Some little goodies. Some little fucking X pills. Listen, dude. I was never a huge fan of flats. I always preferred to just take MDMA. It's easier. It it's cleaner, you know, generally it's easier to gauge what's actually in it, ecstasy, it's, it's actually, it's like opening a mystery box, it's opening a counter-strike case, you could get MDMA, you could get shock, you could get fentanyl, you could get roofied in that bitch, who knows, bro, I could pop that pill and I could be rolling, or I could wake up with my pants at my ankles bent over, who fucking knows, dude, hey, that's the magic of flats, baby, you roll the dice every time. So I start chopping up some lines, and Nate busts out his flats, and he tries to break them down, too, and I'm like, yo, he didn't even say anything. He wasn't like, oh, do you want to snort these? He just started crushing up his fucking X-pills, and I'm like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, hold your horses here, and he's like, oh, like... We could just snort these, too. So I started asking him some questions. I'm like, I mean, have you been snorting them? Like, what? 
Like, what? Where did you? Where did this idea come from? He's like, no, but I mean, I figure it would go well together. You know, it probably hit us faster. I was all game. I was like, bad dude. I mean, I'm not. I asked some questions, but I certainly wasn't about to say no to a good time. So. There I went. I'm chopping up my coke lines. Nate's chopping up his flat, which, by the way, he struggled with that bitch. He struggled with that bitch. Listen, some flats, you get the real shitty ones that were pressed in, like, Jim Bob Joe's garage, all right? Plugman Johnson's back shed. Those are going to be real easy to smash, all right? They're not very firm. Them bitches are going, all right? These flats seem like they were made by at least a mid-grade British or Dutch or Norwegian guy, all right? So pretty decent you know they weren't breaking down too fast the american flats oh them bitches crumble dude don't even get me started and by the way i just want to say before we get any further into this that you should really not try to replicate this it's one thing to do these two substances separately that's your own decision but mixing ecstasy or mdma and coke together is horrible it's extremely dangerous i'm not a doctor and i don't know what it does to your heart but i do know that it made me a little retarded so really don't do this too often like i used to but either way, I chop these lines up, and Nate just adds in the flats. He just adds them in. I never even really got a chance to see what these flats were, because he had them on him pretty much the whole time. He crushed that shit up. It put out a whole lot of powder, like too much. There was way more powder from the crushed up flat than there was from, from my blow. So I was like, damn. Well, now I got a match, so I busted out some more blow. I chopped that up. We mix up all these lines. So each of us had two coke and flat lines. Now, I don't want to say molly. I don't want to jump the gun. I do feel like I rolled, but you really never know with ecstasy, and I got to stress that. So I'm not quite going to call it molly because ecstasy and molly are two very different things, solely because of the fact that if someone really just had good molly, why would they press it? Why would they squish it into a pill when they could just be like, hey, look, this is some clean molly, it's good, and just sell it as is? Why would they go to the extra work and invest that money into a pill press? I'll tell you, because they're adding meth. So I go first with my line, and let me tell you right now, whatever was in these X pills was not correct. It was not right, okay? Listen, I've snorted molly many times before. I've mixed molly with coke many times before. You shouldn't do it, but I sure as hell have. And one thing I can tell you from first-hand experience is it's distinct. You get the normal Molly taste, and you get the normal Coke taste. They just combine into, like, this super chemical and the worst drip you've ever had. But this was not familiar to me. This was not what I knew. You see, there was, like, a pungent almost garbagey flavor to this. There was, uh, I don't even know if I would call it chemically, Maybe it was, but like a strange chemical, a foreign chemical I've never encountered. A foreign body has just entered inside of me. I'm not a fan of that, all right? I, I was not enjoying the flavor of these, but I'm not going to lie, bro. I did the first line. We each had two chopped up. I didn't even have to do the second one. I passed the bill over to Owen, and like... Maybe five minutes later, I was feeling good. I wasn't fully balls to the wall like, damn, I'm tripping. But, hey, I was feeling right. I mean, the coke hits pretty much immediately. But whatever was in those flats hit pretty damn quick as well. I'll tell you, hey, I was feeling amazing very quickly. I just started feeling this heat come over me. I started feeling like almost like I was having a hot flash. I remember I got up. And I went to go turn the fans up in my crib. I didn't have air conditioning, so that, that was off the menu, right? It was just turn the fans up, and, and the ones that I have standing point them in a different direction. That was my strap. But either way, I did what I could with the airflow management to enhance my comfort, right? After that, pass the bill over to Owen. He does his fucking thing. Nate does his thing, too. They pass the bill back to me, and I take my second line pretty much immediately. By the time it got back to me, I was feeling so good. I was like, fuck it, dude. Yeah, I'll take my second one. So then Nate and Owen, they took their second ones too. We are vibing in this bitch. We had more blow ready to go. We didn't even do all the powder from the crushed up flat. We had a whole nother crushed up flat that we earned a whole nother flat that we had to crush up and get to. This night was just getting started. Now we broke this flat down between three people. So realistically, it wasn't a very high dose and the Coke was mostly carrying this experience. But we snorted it. So 
I still definitely felt some of the rolling symptoms. I, I felt this heat come over me, and I really did feel a sense of euphoria. Whether that was the cocaine or the molly talking, I don't know, but... I was happy, and that's all that really mattered at that point. So I was feeling great, and I remember one of the first things that we got into after the vibe started flowing, we started getting the music playing on my TV, is we're sitting there and we're just bullshitting over old memories. We're reminiscing, and I remember this is such a fond memory of mine because it was a really rough time in my life, and this was a day that was like different from the rest of the days I'd been having. A day where it was like, it felt like the old days, you know? I was like, oh man, I'm with the boys, you know? We're, we're getting fucked up, we're mixing molly, and or we're mixing ecstasy and fucking cocaine, and we're, we're squishing weed into rosin and smoking it like hey this is a great day and we're just going back and forth having the chat of our lives as we're chopping up more lines and we probably got through two of the flats that we had busted out pretty quickly we got through those two pretty quickly doing some coke as well and we towards the end we kind of started doing more of the more of the flats in the lines and the coke like the coke was a kicker towards the end you know uh, it was more of like maybe 20% blow or 25% blow and like 75, 80% of the flat, right? So we were just kind of passing the bill around for a couple more rotos and we're sitting there reminiscing, dude. And we're talking and we're like, man, I, I remember this. It was one of those euphoric moments where we're all bussing and we're just going over memories. And we're like, man, you know, you guys are some good friends. You know, we're just, we're literally all just like, hey, you know, you, you guys are good friends. We're just like, oh, you're a good friend too. Like, oh yeah, you're my boy, bro. You know, some homie love. You know, not not in a suspect way. You know, just some some homie love off the mouth. There's nothing wrong with loving the bros. You could kiss the bros too. It's 2024, dude. I mean, I'm not saying we did, but like, you could do that. Dog, it's 2024. You could fuck the bros, honestly. Do as you please. But I was just, I was appreciating the bros. I was like, hey, you, you guys are good friends. You know, they they were saying it too. I, I thanked him. I was like, yo, thank you guys for coming over for real. Like, I needed this shit right now. And as we're talking, you know, we're just kind of dicking around. And I don't remember exactly how this came up. I, I really, I'm conflicted on it. I, you know, thinking about it logically, I feel like this is an idea I probably would have had. But honestly, I don't remember who brought this up. So either way, at some point, the idea was brought up of what would happen if you squished cocaine in the rosin press. And at first, it was kind of like, a, oh, haha, like cocaine rosin, you know? And then, it, you know, maybe two minutes later, it was like, oh, cocaine rosin. And listen, we're, we're idiots. You have to remember, we're all sitting on this couch rolling balls, absolutely strung the fuck out. We had also just smoked a blunt earlier, but that was the least of our concerns with the coke and ecstasy in us. And we were just not thinking straight. So we genuinely thought that squishing some cocaine would produce something that we could smoke. And we were down. We were like, all right, bro, like, you know, if we, if we do the math, like, normally when I squish weed, I get, like, a 10 20% yield, you know? If if we squish cocaine, we're only going to get a 10 20% yield. So let's put, like, a decent-sized rock in that bitch so we could have, like, something big enough to smoke. We actually thought this was going to work. Like, I, I think we were kind of joking, but there was some real faith and confidence in this room of like, yo, we're going to make the first ever cocaine rosin. We were fucking idiots. Now, mind you, while we're doing this, I'm bussing out of my mind. I genuinely couldn't really tell if it was the blow or the molly, but I was feeling beyond euphoric. I felt it in my face. I felt it in my bones. I felt it in my veins. Just this energy, this just happiness that I could physically feel, you know, and it's really difficult to describe the type of euphoria that Molly gives you or Coke gives you or when you combine the two because drug-induced euphoria is not really like any other type of euphoria and the problem with it is once you quit drugs, it's really hard to ever feel that happy again and you'll always be thinking about it. So like, yo, hey, Hey, don't try that shit. Hey, if you're if you're gonna try some drugs, like realistic, I'm not saying you should, but like if you're gonna try drugs, try one that makes you sad so you don't have like fond memories of. You know, your serotonin's okay. My shit is fried. My shit is cooked, bud. All right. So either way, we thought this cocaine rosin was gonna actually work. So I threw some blow on there, and I was like, all right, dude, well, I don't think we need the Micron bags. You know, it's not weed. Let's just put a rock on there and squish that bitch. So that's what we did. We put a rock on there, and we just fucking pressed it. Now, listen, this blow that I had was very oily, right? It wasn't very hard. It was very oily. So 
it kind of just flattened. We pressed it down. I remember we were all watching so intently, just waiting to lift it up to see what was going to be under there. And it, it just flattened. It was like, you know, when you lay the dollar bill, you know, you, you lay the bill over the rock and you got to scrape it with your credit card. And then you take the bill off and it's just like that little pancake of Coke. That's pretty much what we got. So uh, effectively, we just had a, a Coke scraping machine, which was fine and dandy and all. But it wasn't what we expected, and it did not produce cocaine rosin. The problem with this is the, the, the little pancake of blow that we pressed was so, like, firm and pancaked that we had to fight for our fucking rights. If I remember correctly, we just ended up breaking this into pieces and gumming it because we were like, I'm, I'm not even going to bother trying to chop this. Like, this is a mess. This is a nightmare. I don't really know how heat interacts with Coke. I, I guess the heat didn't really seem to do anything to it. I mean, it, it just flattened it. It was fine, but the Coke rosin did not work. So we're like, fuck, dude. All right. I guess we're just gonna gum this shit. So we gummed it. We had done our ecstasy lines at this point, so now we're starting to slow down and chill out a little bit. Because we hadn't even gone to get food yet. We were still trying to go eat. So we went out and we hopped into Owen's car and listen, this, uh, we, none of us were in any condition to be driving, but also none of us were in any condition to make a, a proper decision about whether or not we should be driving. So I hopped in the back seat and we rode our way on over to the McDonald's, which fortunately was only a block away. We splashed in that bitch, man. We got the large drinks, man. We got the cheeseburgers, man. We got the fries, man. This is back when drinks were still a dollar. This is back when you could get a burger, and it was no longer a dollar, but it was still below two dollars. And that was essential. That was important. That was quintessential. I remember when I was younger, I always used to say, the day McDonald's drinks go above a dollar, the economy's in shambles. I don't know where you guys are. I don't know what it's like, but where I am, McDonald's large drinks are not a dollar. So we grabbed our pre-inflation McDonald's and we headed back to my crib and we're munching, dude. We're munching. Listen, sometimes when you start to kind of come down a little bit off the uppers, you just get the munch. And that's how we were feeling. Even after railing a bunch of blow and some flats up the nostril too and attempting to press cocaine rosin, boy, I, hey, we were still ready to eat, I'll tell you what. So we got back, we munched up, and we rolled a couple more blunts. We seshed up, and we kept doing some blow, but we put the flats away for the following day. We were like, eh, you know, we're, we're going to save these for the next day. Let's kind of wind down. So we're chilling out, and we came down a little bit off the molly, but we coasted it with the blow. The blow made the come down not really bad at all. You know, the euphoria chilled out a lot, but I was still feeling good. I was still feeling great. I didn't experience that crash that you typically get when you're coming down off the molly, where A, you're tired, B, you're irritable, and C, you're desperate to roll again. I, I had luckily averted that with the power of cocaine. Thank you, El Chapo. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I could go for longer, but dude, this shit's 23 minutes. I, I, we're just gonna hop out here. I'll probably tell the story of the following day another time. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out the $65 ounces on OnlyGas before they're gone. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces!